What's the word, y'all? Yeah, it's raps, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to the Dallas Mavericks for getting this far. I'm overachieving. We're going to talk about that. But this series is over. Unless, unless they become the first team out of 147-ish to come back down 0-3. Yeah, it's kind of wraps. It might be in four, five, six, or seven, but it feels like this is a Warrior series, and we're gonna be talking about them, previewing them once they get to the NBA Finals. Uh, but this game, hey, listen, this this is what it boiled down to for me personally, because I've been seeing a lot of conversation on Twitter. The game just wrapped up like five minutes ago, and a lot of the conversation on Twitter is revolving around Luca's defense. Oh, Luca got to get in shape. Oh, Luca got to become a plus defender. Boom, boom, boom. Which is yeah, those things help for sure. Luca being a good defender or a plus defender at the bare minimum would be okay, and it would help. But that's not wh- that's not why you lost. That's not why you lost today. You know what I'm saying? Um, You had three people show up to play basketball today. That is one reason. Reggie Bullock was 0 for 10, and Maxi Kleber was 0 for 5, and he had a lot of shots in this game that he completely decided that he didn't want to take because he lost his confidence. You lost the rebound battle. You lost the assist battle. I mean, you, you lost... Oh, you actually won the turnover battle. Okay, bright size, bright size. Listen, Luka being bad on defense, like I said, of course it would help the overall, you know, idea of this team, but you didn't lose this game because Luka is a negative on defense. It was the other stuff. It was the smaller stuff, and and Andrew Wiggins. Yep, and, and Andrew Wiggins. So those are the reasons reasons why you lost these games or well, I guess this game um but it was interesting that's all I asked for right you know all I asked is for interesting games and the Dallas Mavericks was fighting you had Luka Jalen Brunson and Spencer Dinwiddie again be the only people to show up today which is insane and that's not anything new for the Dallas Mavericks in the series it feels like they can never have a game where every single one of their players play up to just just average for them it's always a few people that's giving them complete duds over 10 Reggie over 10 after the way you shot in the last couple series Maxi Kleba I was raving about your three-point shooting you shooting like four 49% from three throughout the playoffs until this series. And actually, let me go look at the series stats because I'm, I'm actually very curious to see when it comes to the series, the people that were hitting the shots in the first two series, how are they performing um, so far? Davis Bertans is shooting 16% from three this series. Maxi Kleber is shooting 22% from three this series. Reggie Bullock is shooting 45%, and I don't think that's that's definitely not accounting for today's game. And that Maxi Kleber's number is not accounting for today's game. These, these are in the first two games of the, of the series. So you take that 0 for 5 for Maxi Kleber, and then you add that 0 for 7 for three for Reggie Bullock those numbers are a lot rougher a lot a lot worse rougher um like I said this might be the end this might be the funeral or the pre-funeral what do you there's a party before the funeral is that called the wake this is the wake for the Dallas Mavericks and I don't think their fans should be upset about anything um because this was an overperformance they should be thinking about what happens in this offseason or in the next offseason or whatever it may be to improve this team one thing I would dread for this team is that the front office will look at what they did they're doing right now and be like the pieces are here let's just run it back another year of Luka we bring back Jalen Brunson and another year of Dorian Finney Smith. Uh, oh, um, Tim Hardaway Jr. is back. That was the missing piece. I would I would feel so bad for the fan base if that's the case because I believe that with this current roster, a championship is going to be a super hard to win. And that's why if you look at my pre playoff thing, I put them in had to be perfect because I think everything had to be perfect for them to win this championship. But they did exceed my expectations for sure. But I, I don't think that Luka needs a secondary superstar alongside him. But I do believe that they need some improvement across their roster. I do believe they need a viable center, like an above average center player. Play, um for for the defensive reasons for the rebound of reasons because they're going to beat on all of those aspects so um i think we'll talk about their entire offseason once the series has ended and i want to focus on the golden state warriors because the dynasty continues the dynasty continues after a couple years where we thought it might have been lost here they are back in the finals and for me personally i know dynasty has a couple different meanings to different people but i i would i would count this core as a dynasty you win the first championship with this current core when i'm talking about steph curry clay thompson during my green Boom, the year after that, you know, Draymond Green kicks some people in the nuts and they end up blowing a 3-1 lead. Kevin Durant comes to the team, you win a couple more championships, and then he leaves to go on to his next team, and then you use a couple more seasons to get back to the conference finals and just one game away from being back to the finals. To me, they have been one of the most dominant teams in the last, I don't know, eight years. For me, that's 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 a dynasty. That's what a dynasty is. Now, they had to capitalize and go ahead and win that championship. I don't know if it's going to be against the Heat. I don't know if it's going to be against the Boston Celtics, and I don't know who I would pick in that series so far, but in this playoff run, in the 2022 playoffs, the Golden State Warriors has looked like the best team, for sure. And then now they got me thinking about all the things that they did to, to get to this point. Like I said, Kevin Durant came to the team. It takes some extreme circumstances for them to lose that championship the last year of Kevin Durant with Klay Thompson going down, the KD going down, and all of the injuries. I'm not saying that the, the championship is void because I'm not that type of dude, but um, a lot of things had to go wrong for them to lose that championship. Kevin Durant decided, I want to be a Brooklyn Net. And this is why. This is why I'm I, like, if Zach Levine leaves the Bulls, We need to get something back. Kevin Durant knew 
that the the Brooklyn Nets had two max spots because Kyrie Irving told him that in the was that the All Star game twenty nineteen in Chicago that he told him two max spots, two max spots, and everybody was going crazy over it. two max spots. But Kevin Durant was like, "Hey man, these dudes did me decent for the last couple years. They got me my first championship. Um, I won some Finals MVP awards. I don't want to just leave them in the dust. So, so you know what, Brooklyn, can you send them some stuff? I, I, I'm guess that's not exactly how the conversation went. But they got back D'Angelo Russell, Sebastian Napier, and Travion Graham. You're like, that's ain't nothing. D'Angelo Russell don't even play for them no more. But oh, oh boy, that boy Bob Myers decided to flip this man, um, um, D'Angelo Russell for Wiggins. A 2021 first round pick, top three protected. That was Jonathan Kaminga. And and as you can see, Wiggins blossomed into an all-star. And today, and specifically in that fourth quarter, Wiggins was amazing. I mean, oh, whole game he played really well. But for the fourth quarter, Wiggs, where you get the poster, you get the put-back dunk, you get him going to the free... Wiggins get it to the free... Come on, man. Wiggins shot 80% from the free throw line tonight. Played good defense. Led all score. Nope, he did not lead all scores. Steph Curry also had 31. And then I forgot Luka had, uh, Luka had 40. But hey, a star in his role. This was an all-star performance from Andrew Wiggins in a game that you you really, really wanted, right? You wanted to suck all of the hope out of this series, and you did that, and Wiggins did that. He ended up with 10 points in that quarter. He shot uh, three for five from the field, and he hit four of the five of his free throws. So that's an amazing quarter for Andrew Wiggins, right? So you do all of that. You know, I remember at the time, you know, they pulled off the D'Angelo Russell trade, and I was I was a bit, I was questioning it. Like, because I've seen what Wiggins had done in his previous stop, and, you know, he was solid. He was good for, like, 20 a game, but, like, there is motor issues. There was like, will he ever be able to defend? And boom, they turned Wiggins' career around. And now you, I mean, some people might still say it, but you can't look at Wiggins as a bust. Bro, as an all-star starter, and he's one game away from being in the finals, and he played a huge part in it. And then like, bro, been sitting on the bench as a 12th man. This man has been one of the best players on the team that's about to go to the finals. So they turned all of that. And then now they're bridging the current and the future. Even though Jonathan Kaminga, most moody, haven't played big parts in his playoff run, we saw what they could potentially do when Jonathan Kaminga got minutes in the regular season I know I'm talking about regular season here but come on man I can't I can't expect him to be thrown into the fire of the playoffs as a 19 year old who, had, who didn't play no like I don't know the G League at night has a playoffs you know what I'm saying and like it ain't like uh Jonathan Kaminga played March Madness basketball win or go home basketball I can't expect him to get thrown to the fire and him to perform crazily but in the regular season I was the guy who's like man you got to get him more minutes because when he plays he looks amazing Moses Moody had been up and down up and down between here and the G but when he's up here he's good and you still got Wiseman. I don't know what the hell going on with Wiseman, but they, they've been able to bridge this gap between Steph Curry, who's 30 plus years old, uh, Clay Thompson and Draymond Green, who are 30 plus years old, who are, I would say, outside their prime, but still pretty damn good. And they've done a, a really good job at it. I ain't even mentioned the name Jordan Poole, who they got at the end of the first round a couple years ago, turned him to a G League player, to one of the more exciting and more impactful players in all of basketball. So I got to get a lot of love to the Golden State Warriors and the way they've done these things, man. I, I've, been, I've been trying to explain to people that have Having a consistent, smart front office dude goes a long way when it comes to drafting, bro. It comes to drafting. Now, they, they ain't shooting 100% from the draft, that's for sure. But when they hit, they hit. Hitting on Steph Curry. Hitting on Draymond Green in the second round. 11th overall pick, Klay Thompson. Kevon Looney. I don't even know what Kevon Looney got drafted. I would assume his late first round, early second round. Uh, <laughs> actually, let me look that up because Kevon Looney deserved my respect. My fault, Kevon. 30th overall pick. Yep, because it's the Warriors, right? In 2015, it's the Warriors. They were the best team of basketball before. So, yeah, so they've done a pretty good job drafting. Um, the only one that might be a miss, only time will tell, would be the number two overall pick, James Wiseman. Uh, but I even understood the pick in that moment. I, I still would have probably went LaMelo, but I understand the rationale of trying to get the big there. And we're going to see how they do, man. We're going to see how they do in this upcoming a series because I will say no matter if it is Miami or if it is the Boston Celtics, it's going to be the best defensive team you've played against so far. I will say that. The best defensive team you've played against so far. And if the Dallas Mavericks somehow come back and win this series, cl clip all of this and send it to every single one of my tweets to the end of the existence. If y'all are the one to break the mold of the 0-1 0-146, Y'all deserve to clown me to the end of existence. Legitimately, you deserve it. But I'm excited to see what they end up doing at the end of the season. I mean, Jason Kidd came in earlier in the year, and they was kind of average. They was beating up on bad teams, losing to good teams, and then the, the defense started to click, the shooters started to shoot, and then Luka got into shape, and just like that, they was 
coasting along the way. Um, but I mentioned this a couple videos ago. This run right here reminds me of the Portland Trailblazers. The only difference is this is still an early team in their thing. Like I felt like when Portland, the Portland ended up in the conference finals, Dame, it was already already rumors about Dame and CJ potentially trying to break up. Ain't no rumors around this team because Luca's like 23 years old. You know what I'm saying? But I, when I say it feels like the Portland Trailblazers series, it's like a team that surprised the world as like a four five C getting all the way to the conference finals and then getting swept potentially, potentially getting swept by the Golden State Warriors because the Golden State Warriors are almighty. Oh, yeah. I saw my... I, man, I be seeing my mentions, bro. I don't always reply to my tweets because the main account could get so very toxic. That's why I'm tweeting over there. I, I've been enjoying tweeting on my baseball account and then my burner account um, because NBA fans are so weird. Um, But I've been seeing the reply... Man, I, can I take one day off? Yeah, I didn't talk about the game last night, but I just I just want to chill with the fam, bro. I be uploading like 15 videos a week across platforms. I deserve a day, you feel me? But I could quickly give you give you my synopsis or my analysis about the last game for sure. Let me let me let me go ahead and pull this up. Oh man, Idris. Oh no no no, it's Bam again. It's Bam again. My elbows are ashy, but hey. It's Bam again. We call this man interest when he don't perform, and it's Bam when he does. And Bam came out to play from very early on. He heard every podcast in the world that's recapping NBA, talking about the fact that Bam Adebayo is giving you like five points a game, and he's a max player. And then this one, he gave you 31, and he looked as aggressive as all can be. And then you having Cal Lowry back in this game was huge. I cannot express it enough. I know he only end, ended with 11 points and six assists, but I promise you his presence was known from the very early on. Getting Bam Adebayo involved, running the break, just keeping the pace alive. He had an early jump shot he was getting Jimmy involved and, and Jimmy had to leave with his little injury and now we got him with an injury we got uh Marcus Smart twisted his ankle and I don't know how the heck bro came back to play Jason Tatum had a little stinger in the shoulder every single quarter somebody went down with an injury and the Miami Heat were able to pull it away even though Jimmy Butler was gone but the Boston Celtics had their little run and I know everybody's already talked about this about um Jason Tatum how like it's either he's dropping you 50 or he's giving you 10 and he looks terrible that was I, I think I said this in last year's too or Maybe it was a series before that. This is one of the worst games I've ever seen from Jason Tatum. Legitimately. He was he was giving up the ball to the other team. There's like two possessions in the third quarter where he just he looked at like Max Cruz in his eyes and said, Here. And Max Cruz was like, shit, I don't. <laughs> Victor Depot came in the second half and made me look expendable. So I need to take this. I need to take this steal and do something with it. And he did. Um I don't, I don't have predictions for the rest of the series, bro. It's just it's wishy-washy, wishy-washy. I, I just want to see Robert Williams play healthy basketball, bro. Like, he's so important to what this team does. And, yes, they have won games and closed out series without him. But I, I do believe that what he brings is so important to their potential chances of winning the series. So, I hope he gets back healthy. I hope that the Marcus Smart ankle thing is not anything that's going to hold him out of a game. Or even if it keeps him into the game, it's not something that he's, like, limping along. I hope that Jason Tatum come back to play because Jalen Brown gave you the – uh. Uh, everything you wanted I think I got a notification that he's the first person to drop 40 points on perfect from two pointers since like the early 70s that that's like a a big man stat you know perfect from two he did that uh but you got you got my MVP of this game going to PJ Tucker he did everything you could imagine for him playing great defense like I said on Jason Tatum making him struggle and he also finished with 17 points which might be a career high I ain't looking at it but I'm gonna assume it's a career high for PJ Tucker because nobody expect PJ Tucker to do any of that anyway all I can hope for is that in some time in my adult life before the age of 90 that the, that the Bulls are um a team that's ran greatly uh, like the Golden State Warriors. I know it has happened in my lifetime, but when I'm three years old, that don't count. I was not watching those games. So let's hope that we get a, a Bob Myers 2.0 um, and Artunis Connie Chauvis and he know what the hell he doing so I can, you know, go five, seven years and only have two down years and then the rest of the years we're contenders because that's that sounds like the best thing as a fan. You feel me? You have a couple tanking years, you get a top three pick, a number seven pick, and now you got superstars and they're back to being in the finals. I, that's I'm, I'm jealous. I'm low-key jealous. I'm low-key jealous. I've been in Chase Center. It's fire, but I'm, I'm the Bulls need to do something similar. I don't know.